as we now move towards the next presentation by Mr. R.S. Vasan, a stalwart in the pharmaceutical industry. And uh, sir is here. Welcome, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I'm able to hear you. Okay, so quickly I'll introduce industry veteran with four decades of experience spanning sales, marketing, commercial leadership, and general management roles. He is the senior vice president of sales and marketing at Sun Pharma. He oversees the specialty care business cluster of Sun Pharma. He is fond, fondly remembered as the Augmentin Man. So, yes, we all are looking forward to hearing from you, um, uh, sir on this segment, antibiotics, and uh, on the consulting physician segment that we surveyed. And over to the augmented man, uh, Mr. R.S. Vasan. Please take over, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Swati, for that very kind introduction. In fact, I am um, I, I first uh, think to myself whether I'm the most qualified person to talk on augmented. Because, uh, yeah, I did... Uh, launch or actually relaunch the brand. We'll go to it a little later. Uh, that was uh, way back in 1994 and was associated with that uh, for the next seven to eight years. But then later on, there are other people who have built it uh, uh, to whatever it is uh, today. So uh, with uh, all humility, I accept uh, what you say that uh, I, or what you call me the augmented man. So before that, good afternoon, uh, everyone. And uh, before I begin this uh, session, uh, uh, first of all, you know, <laughs> my previous speaker, uh, I think uh, Deepal Mistry has uh, given a very passionate and uh, uh, exciting uh, uh, talk, you know, energetic talk. So I can understand uh, clearly how Telma has topped the chart. So uh, it's it's uh, it's afternoon and then uh, following uh, Deepal is a difficult task, uh, but then I'll try to do my best. So my regards first to late Professor Chitamitra and... Uh, uh, Dr. Tarun Gupta, uh, both have been uh, doyens and I can go back to those early days of my career and uh, uh, Professor Chitamitra, who has also been very instrumental in pushing Augmentin up. So one thing I remember very fondly about him is, uh, you know, his criticism. So one thing I always uh, expect uh, from brand managers is uh, how good uh, you can be at taking criticisms because that is one thing they say that uh, your uh, criticism becomes uh, the breakfast for champions. So uh, the professor never used to be very happy. Sometimes it was easier facing our uh, CEO than the professor. So, But he used to always, so it was positive, constructive. So he always used to show opportunities where our brands can do better. So I I uh, am very happy to speak here uh, in this uh, program, which is in his honor. And also Dr. Tarun Gupta, though I didn't work in GSK when Dr. Tarun Gupta was there, but then... Uh, I could see a lot of his legacy left behind in the company when uh, I moved over from Smith Klein Beecham to GSK and a lot of uh, uh, tales, uh, folklore going around. And, uh, you know, so Dr. Uh, uh, late Dr. Tarun Gupta is also uh, very well known and somewhere associated with GSK, which uh, to which the brand Augmentin belongs. So then, of course, uh, you know, I am also very, very Happy and honored to share uh, this session uh, on brand chat with uh, Mr. Mohan Motwani, uh, who has been a tremendous uh, inspirer for all of us. Uh, you know, he was a revolutionary leader in uh, pharma those days uh, in 80s uh, and 90s. And uh, what he has uh, done for Sipla is something that has gone into the books uh, for everyone to read. So, uh, and then, of course, <laughs> last but not the least, my good friend Shankar Das. Uh, with whom uh, we, we were co colleagues in college. So very happy to hear him on uh, Omez and uh, Razo and uh, on his uh, Gita branch. So uh, with this few introduction, I'll just uh, get on with the task. What I've done is in my uh, presentation, hopefully I'll be on time. Uh, so it is, okay, the story is about Augmentin, but through the prism of Augmentin, how can we actually go around and uh, understand how to build brands? So because... Uh, uh, more or less the same principles have been applied uh, uh, during my stint with uh, Johnson Johnson where we created Ultraset or uh, then later on with Sun Pharma where we built uh, Sustain into a big brand, Silodal or uh, Ninja uh, uh, later uh, during the COVID time. So the principle is the same, but I'll stick on to examples from Augmentin. 
and uh, then we will uh, see how we how what goes into what are the ingredients that constitute uh, building a big brand now uh, you will also find very interestingly many of the points which i am going to speak have already been uh, captured mentioned so sometimes repetition is good you know so you all understand that uh, you know we are alluding uh, i am alluding to the same message which has been given by the previous speaker so that uh, uh, what goes out as a take away learning is uh, pretty consistent and it can't be missed because so many speakers have come and uh, repeated the same thing again and again so with this i just move on to say first of all i think uh, why do you launch a product i think that is the question uh, which one need to ask today uh, because uh, very often i find uh, when people launch the product why just in case you know because somebody else will be launching and in case if it becomes uh, uh, big uh, then uh, you know i might have lost out and uh, so this uh, pussy footedness or being uh, not sure and then going ahead and launching is a recipe for disaster so why we launch we should be very clear as a brand manager why are we launching this uh, Uh, like me means uh, have we understood the opportunity have we seen the size of the market have we uh, uh, do we know where we are heading do we know because how would you resolve otherwise how would you resolve how do you work out a plan so we can't just say that very often i hear saying that somebody else is launching somebody else is ready they are going to come on this date but how big a target are you going to take no i do not know means uh, uh, i'm not sure so that's something i think uh, which uh, we should be very clear when we had launched uh, Uh, augmenting we were absolutely clear that uh, this was the flagship brand of uh, uh, smith klein beach selling uh, very well uh, globally it was the leading uh, brand for the company globally uh, but in india of course uh, it was with another company which had uh, actually um, uh, you know marketed it in india because it was licensed out by beachm to them uh, for about 5 years without uh, much success now uh, then subsequently beachm uh, when it became when the smith klein and french became smith klein beachm uh, got the brand to itself and then relaunched this uh, product so when they relaunched it was very clear that what they wanted to achieve in fact uh, uh, you know at that point in time what you are talking is about 30 years ago that uh, the, it was uh, fairly ambitious what we were looking at uh, in terms of this would, this would be the biggest ever launch for the company in its history of its existence so, so this has though this has been not a great success in the hands of an other organization so that much of clarity has to be there because that is the way your launch is going to be planned that is the way your communication is going to go through within the team at head office within uh, other departments and also to the field force at large so then what do you do first uh, as we call today you know you need to study the pitch if you have to use a cricketing parlance you need to study the pitch so i heard uh, deepal saying that you know talk to doctors go and meet customers i think that's very important again i am alluding to the same thing go and meet doctors go and talk to them find out uh, you know what they think because when you prescribe an antibiotic i uh, if i go back then you know there were cephalosporins first generation second generation third generation penicillins in the market then there were quinolones then there were uh, carbapenems were yet to come in you had aminoglycosides then uh, uh, you know you also had sulbactam uh in the market sell back them sell back them combination so that was a beta lactamase inhibitor so uh, you know you have so many but did we really understand uh, uh, why they prescribe what when do they prescribe a cephalosporin when do they prescribe a macrolide when do they prescribe a quinolone means uh, i think that understanding was very very crucial for us and what made them prescribe what type of uh, data they had so then we go on to the customer insights so when we talk we, do we talk to the doctor and ask them why did you choose or what made you choose which brand uh, so what, 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 if they talk about resistance very often when you talk about antibiotics you talk about resistance so when you talk about resistance do they really understand what is resistance so resistance uh, is uh, yeah typically when you're when you're when you're uh, chosen an antibiotic uh, fails to work against a certain uh, bacteria which is suspected to be there uh, then you say okay this is resisting it is not working but then resistance is also not so simple because uh, resistance is specific to a particular organism against a particular antibiotic then there is uh, uh, a level of resistance what you see in the hospital then there is a level of resistance what you see in the community then there is something called uh, uh, you know the bacteriological cure what you achieve versus the clinical cure what you achieve and then uh, there is this whole uh, set of doctors called microbiologists 
who actually uh, you know come up with their uh, uh, information to help the practicing physician uh, to indicate what is the resistance and uh, uh, which antibiotic is most likely to work so there was so much that was happening you know there was so much that was happening and how how good is this information flow how well it is captured how authentic it is and do the phys treating physicians uh, care for uh, what these microbiologists say so all this when we dig deep and try to understand uh, you can find that there were a lot of gaps that one could fill so when you say you are filling the gap you are actually trying to add value. So you are trying to get some sort of a meaning into this madness. So many antibiotics being present there and, uh, you know, making the doctor take a very rational and a scientific choice. So opportunity was there to do something. And these are all, again, I'm going back to say to be studied before even you decide to launch the product. Because here we were taking over a product which had not done that well with uh, another company. So obviously you need to understand why it didn't do well and uh, then coming to the market insight market what companies were talking what other competitors were speaking so you find that how are they being promoted so very often we find that uh, you know literature pieces said yeah this is for uh, uti rti giti uh, you know ssti and all that so first to begin with i think uh, these are very pharma lingo you know uti rti uh, giti and all that I think whenever I talk to a doctor, he has always said it is bronchiectasis, bronchiectasis or uh, bronchitis or, uh, you know, very, very otitis media. Clearly specify the uh, indication. Don't use abbreviation short form because that is the language they speak. So, uh, so uh, you know, uh, th then, uh, you know, does one antibiotic really work everywhere? So we claim that, uh, you know, this is for uh, head to toe. Uh, does it make sense uh, to call that uh, this is the one which works for head to toe? Uh, can it can something be good uh, head to toe and uh, then when you saw those literature of uh, brands being promoted uh, it is very interesting to see that uh, you know the studies so study you compare and say mine is 95 percent competitor is 76 percent so but uh, what is the study where it was done which paper it was published uh, how many uh, patients were there and were the patient cohort uh, uh, very similar and I find that what was being promoted was one part for you was from a different study. What you showed against a competition uh, uh, in terms of numbers was from an entirely different study. It was not a direct head-to-head -head comparison. And uh, sometimes, you know, uh, you, all sorts of things were being mixed up. Some uh, the the relevant strengths in terms of antibiotics were not, uh, uh, you know, the equivalent uh, therapeutic strengths were not compared. If you compare a finite biological study somewhere with a 250 milligram study for a competitor, of course, you are, it's going to show a different number. But these were just flashed and passed on because uh, I think perhaps the brand managers felt that the, uh, the field guy should get something very good and strong in his hand so he can show it to the doctor. So on the receiving end, the doctors were just seeing a chart where whoever comes and uh, promotes, he was just showing his bar was the longest versus the competition. The next guy would come in to show that his bar was longer. And, uh, you know, he, did, he really didn't care. He thought that... Uh, they are doing a job to promote their product, but there was lack of credibility in the information that was being uh, shared. So this again threw some opportunity. Then knowing who is your customer. Now, you know, for a product like Augmentin, which of course has a broad spectrum uh, because uh, clavulanic acid truly enables amoxicillin to widen its gram negative coverage. So uh, we can go all the way, you know, we can, uh, we could have gone to chest specialists, ENTs, physicians, GPs, pediatricians, gynecologists, dermatologists, surgeons, uh, urologists, and who not, because uh, it works in uh, all types of respiratory infections, URT, it had excellent data in otitis media, uh, urinary tract infections, uh, skin and soft tissue infections, uh, uh, everywhere, dental infections and whatnot. But then, uh, you know, what constitutes your market? Now, this is very interesting. So, uh, there is this uh, great temptation, you know, uh, to go and promote it everywhere because, uh, you know, that's how maybe others are doing. And that's how this doctor has said that uh, he has an opportunity to use it there. Uh, so I will go and uh, promote, uh, you know, in uh, all these indications, it doesn't really help. So what we decided with Augmentin at that time was we will restrict it to just uh, respiratory tract infections. Of course, we included both upper respiratory and lower respiratory the drug had wonderful data with respect to urinary tract infections. We never went there. So the drug had wonderful data with respect to skin and soft tissue infections. We didn't go there. 
because uh, you know cloxacil in combination was very good with respect to skin and soft tissue infections because mostly in skin and soft tissue infections you get staphylococcus aureus and staphylococcus aureus the beta lactam is produced by staphylococcus aureus was actually managed by cloxacillin very well so compared to the price of an ampiclox augmentin was uh, seriously expensive maybe seven eight times more so why do you really go and uh, butt your head there or uh, you know go and uh, talk against uh, quinolones in UTI because uh, in India one interesting thing actually when augmentin was launched elsewhere it was actually the logical successor to amoxicillin you had ampicillin you had amoxicillin and then you had augmentin so it became relatively little easy whereas when uh, Smith and Beecham launched augmentin here already you had the uh, uh, laser test with quinolones and uh, the uh, uh, second generation even third generation cephalosporins like cefixim already there in the market so you couldn't really uh, you know, take on that amoxicillin market, but you had to see. And uh, the price was uh, also, you should be fair enough. If suppose uh, a quinolone is able to do its job in UTI at a much cheaper uh, price than what uh, augmentin can do or a cloxa combination can do its job in uh, SSTI as good as uh, what augmentin can do at a higher price, then it is prudent to leave that market alone. Whereas in respiratory infection, we saw a good uh, opportunity. So we restricted ourselves to the respiratory infection now what constitutes a market very often i hear uh you know people saying that uh, oh my market uh, this is how ims defines this is how avax defines this is how... they don't define the market the brand manager defines the market so a market is a set of patients with a common need where your drug can offer solution which is better than the alternative so simply choose a market or i am saying play to your strength so simply choose a market where there are a set of patients who have a common need and where the solution what you are going to offer through your brand is uh, better than what the alternatives are in the market so this i think we should uh, take it this becomes your home address if the market definition goes wrong everything else goes wrong your measure in terms of market share or how big you can get it is always wonderful to define the market as small as possible at times uh, and then uh, you know try to say that my market share is very high or uh, try to go too large, too expensive, and then get nowhere. So I think you should strike a very uh, 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 the, the right sort of a thing in uh, uh, consonance with the strength of the brand. So what I would say is what we did with Augmentin, we said that we are going to play only in the respiratory tract uh, uh, infection market. So when we said that we are going to play only in the respiratory tract infection market because uh, most uh, bacteria, excepting uh, Streptococcus pneumoniae, uh, the other uh, bacteria, Haemophilus influenzae, Klebsiella pneumoniae, or uh, Moraxella catarrhalis, uh, uh, all of these stuff actually produce beta lactamase. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the strength of Augmentin was, uh, it was a resistance fighter. It was the power of the clavulanate, which we are going to speak about. Enough has been talked about amoxicillin. So there was nothing more to talk on amoxicillin. And a little bit of survey when we did, uh, it actually threw up that doctors were not much clear about uh, what a beta lactamase inhibitor is so uh, that actually gave us an opportunity uh, they they didn't know what is a beta lactamase inhibitor sulbactam was there huh? then i heard people saying that you know uh, how do you you know whether you define your market molecule to molecule or uh, a brand to brand we had that very interesting discussion this morning so if we have to launch uh, augmentin and if we decide that do i go after a plain amoxicillin market or do I go, do I consider, uh, so uh, the, the quinolones as well, which were also used at times by that time in respiratory infection. So how do I define it? So uh, I think, uh, or do I just go behind the beta lactamase inhibitor market? That was a very, very small market, which uh, sulbactam was there already in the market. So I use ampicillin sulbactam as a, a marker and say that this is my market. I would be very happy because, uh, uh, you know, it would have uprooted uh, sulbactam by year one and said that, oh God, I've done a great job. But that is because you defined the market very narrowly. So what we decided here was, in terms of indication, we will play it to respirate rack, upper and lower. But in terms of molecules I am competing with, we are going to compete with every damn molecule there. It is not like in the sense, I am going to say that in respiratory, I am the best. So if they are going to write, uh, say, uh, uh, you know, whether it be quinolones, whether it be macrolides, whether it be, uh, you know, any other uh, antibiotic, what they are using, uh, then you can ask that, okay, how do you justify? Because still, you know, an erythromycin at that time or even an azithromycin might have been uh, 
slightly cheaper because Azitro was launched around the same time, but it cut its price. Roxitro was there. But then to say that, look, your children can't wait for relief. This offers first time success because it's a resistance fighter. If your scientific story is very strong, I think uh, you can still win. You keep it there, then let the doctor decide. In the sense, uh, I am saying mine is better technically than uh, all the other uh, uh, antibiotics in the area of respiratory tract infection. So we clearly mark out respiratory tract infections, otitis media as our market, not the other parts of the uh, body. But in this area, uh, because of its better penetration, better availability and the organisms involved there, where augmentin gives you better uh, uh, sort of uh, advantage, uh, there I am saying that it is better than every other drug. So, with once you have this understanding, you get the vision. What, how, uh, how big you can take this? Because this is very important. You can't just uh, think like, okay, let me launch and see and all that. So, you know, I'll quickly to 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 drive home this point. Why it is so important? I'll just uh, uh, give you a quick example. See, you know, you have a. Uh, it is often said that a, a cub and a kitten looks uh, the same when it was very young. So, if you start uh, feeding the cub like a kitten, no, what you'll give to the kitten, you it, it won't uh, the cub wouldn't grow to become a, a tiger. It will be a cat. So, unless you have a vision, uh, we were very very clear that this is going to take the world by storm. It is going to get uh, uh, you know uh, to become the leading antibiotic in India as well because we understand from the market what is the uh, level of understanding of bacterial resistance, how much it is talked about uh, in a very scientific, rational manner, what is the role of microbiologists today uh, in the uh, 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 treatment area, do they give good advice, do they feel cared about, and can we do something there to get uh, uh, the uh, uh, picture right uh, for doctors, add value. So if you know, if you know, I, oh, I can add a lot of value along the chain and I am going to change, revolutionize the way this uh, treatment is happening, then you know you can you can set a longer vision you can set a bigger vision so it's very important because your vision decides how are you going to resource the product i think this i won't take uh, much time whom and what to leave out yeah very clearly somebody else is also saying i think shankar das was saying that uh, you know what are you going to leave out so you have to be very clear positioning happens when you leave out something he was quoting professor chitta mitra i think very true so you know you can't be the best to everyone that uh, temptation of saying that uh, you know, I am good at everything and I am efficacious, I am safest, I am uh, 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 very convenient to use and all this stuff. This is, I think, is crazy. So, we clearly left out, as I told you, the urologists, the gynecologists, the dermatologists, they are not in our picture. Initially, if you ask me, we just talked to 25 doctors in a list of 225 doctors, uh, what the each of the uh, MRs carried. So, just to 25 doctors, of course. You have to throw back uh, by 30 years because at that time, uh, uh, you know, uh, this was an expensive product. We launched it at around uh, uh, 375 augmentin was launched at around uh, 27 rupees 50 paisa uh, per uh, uh, per tablet, which was costing around around 82 rupees uh, uh, per day then. So, and we were very clear that we are not going to get into UTI and SSTA, though there were very credible uh, uh, data to back. So this is very important to, in terms of positioning. So I, as I told you, play to your strength, play on the uh, home pitch. Uh, uh, you know, you create, uh, you know, they say these days, uh, again, you create designer wickets. You know, you create designer wickets and play on the home pitch. Uh, one can't stand for all and, uh, you know, you can't mean everything to everyone. Though that, that greed one has to uh, control. Play to the brand's biggest scientific strength. As I told you, the resistance fighter, very clear. Uh, and you say resistance fighter in a better way when you say, of course, there was some controversy. I should uh, uh, concede that to use first time success. But in a way, we were trying to convey that uh, there was no need to try something else. And then uh, if resistant, go back to augment in. But then uh, because it's a resistance fighter, you can push it uh, up uh, so that your children can't, uh, your children needn't wait for relief. I still remember in otitis media, the slogan was for a long time, the children can't wait for uh, uh, relief, you know, means uh, it, 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 it made an appeal. So it's another way of saying that use it early. Again, this also, I, I think I'm just alluding to what uh, my previous speakers have said, consistent messaging, keep the message the same, because very often you find that first, uh, uh, you know, uh, the best thing is to don't change the product manager too often. Uh, I, I think uh, that's a mistake uh, which uh, happens and uh, 
you know you keep changing brand manager then the brand manager is uh, under pressure to do something new different and uh, they keep uh, tinkering with the message they get a new agency or the same agency comes with a different message this actually uh, you know it spoils the whole fun and it uh, it doesn't appeal to the customer you get a very the customer gets a very diffused image about your uh, product so uh, consistent once you have decided this is the uh, advantage the strength of my product versus competition these are the this is the target audience this is the indication this is the uh, advantage for this reason it is able to you talk uh, classically about the uh, feature benefit uh, uh, sort of a uh, uh, thing you know so you say that this is the benefit it offers because of this feature if all the other things are in uh, place then the core message shouldn't change uh, even if you see you know today i am just surprised though as i told you before that uh, i left augmentin long back uh, but then uh, uh, i'm very happy to see that after 25 uh, years plus the pack is the same the pack looks the same and uh, they have not changed it they have not uh, and uh, hopefully the message also they have not changed much though they have taken it now to a much larger audience we started with a small group because you need to get a sort of core customers committed to your product so the coming slides will see who they should be but first you need to have that you can't just go and talk to if you are the most expensive antibiotic in town and you want to take it to the last gp and the rmp because he can write straight away tomorrow i think that's not a wise thing to do of course in terms of delivery you can think once i have decided on the message how i can deliver so that has to be creative that has to be exciting it has to enthuse the field force now today i think uh, the previous speakers and uh, we have been hearing to others about uh, today there are a lot of other options you know digital technologies uh, you got uh, so much uh, to actually uh, you know make it far more creative and today you know the message reaches before the messenger so because of the digital system those days uh, you know the, he was waiting for the rep to communicate on the product today it is no longer that that uh, the rep needs to knock the door to, uh, one by one clinic by clinic to go and communicate what is the what is on the brand but you can use other technologies to reach quicker Uh, but uh, then make sure that uh, the message is consistent you can use all types of creativity to deliver so that you get noticed and you are first and uh, yeah there was also this question about whether you can be first or late or whatever i always say that preferably be first though augment in the case of a relaunch but uh, preferably be first but definitely you should be first in mind you can't be late in mind and then try to make a big uh, brand so may not be first in market but first in mind is a different thing from being first in the market if somebody has left a gap for you there so this is what i was telling so who would you take it to kol casket that's what i was saying that you take it only to select set of customers see i always find that today you know uh, india is vast there is potential everywhere see india is a country today which is so fantastic you can sell acute products you can sell chronic products you can sell hospital products you can sell trade products you can sell uh, you know whatever you want means in anywhere you want that is the way that is the opportunity it is booming so there is this huge temptation to take it everywhere but if you are sure of the concept if you know that you have got a story to tell and you are not a me to or you are not the number fifth number 50th brand coming into the market trying to get a share of what is already there even if i get a piece of the cake i will make some decent sale for myself you get very little leverage by that See, I always believe that it is better to be a 50 crore brand in a 100 crore market than being a 100 crore uh, brand in a 1000 crore market. If you are a 100 crore brand in a 1000 crore market when already there is another brand at 200 crores, the leverage you what you have in the market to dictate the market is very minimal. You you can't somebody else is dictating, somebody else is calling the shot. But even if you are a 50 crore brand in a 100 crore market and you are the brand leader because you have got 50 percent of the market. then you can still dictate that market you can grow that market that market will behave to your tunes so if you have to do that then it is very important to get your aims and jipmer and pgi doctors rallying behind you don't have this temptation to take it to the last gp or somewhere all doctors are not equal in terms of they may generate the same value in terms of prescriptions and that too is debatable but assuming that okay all chest physicians can say, generate the same value in terms of prescriptions but their weighted opinion is different when i get a prescription out of aims today the value it generates is far higher or the followership it generates is far higher than maybe what i get from somewhere else in an interior town in uh, some remote part of the country so you have to get your big ticket right 
your top doctors in the country in that specialty has to endorse your brand. It takes hard work. It takes time. They are skeptical. They will drill you. But I think as a brand manager at head office, we should own up because the field will need support. They can't crack everyone. You need to be there and try to get there. So this is something which I think went off very well with uh, the launch of Augmentin. And uh, aim for successful outcomes and not superlative sales number. This is very interesting. See, there are two situations. You can get 20 prescriptions and you can say that, okay, 10 of those patients had excellent relief. Okay. Or you can get just 15 prescriptions and then say 12 of those patients had excellent relief. Our doctors were very happy with 12 out of 15 patients. Or they were happy with 10 out of 20 patients. So if your positioning is right, if your message is right, if you have clearly decided where to play and where not to play, the 12 out of 15, though it generates less sale initially, is a far better situation to be in than 10 out of 20. 10 out of 20, because 20 prescriptions are out, you are going to generate more sale. But you have also sprayed your bullets. You have gone into areas where you could have avoided. So the customer experience with the product actually is diluted. The doctor should feel that every time I use this product, whatever was said about it, whatever was shown about it, whatever the scientific evidence says, I also see that in my practice. I am able to experience in my practice. So this was something we have to keep in mind, irrespective of the therapy, you know. I think this is very important. Know the strength of your product. Choose that. See, go deep. Select a set of customers. Here is a set of patients who need my product. In that market, how deep can I go rather than jumping from one indication to another indication where there could be equally good or even better alternatives? Uh, Vasan, sir, uh, yeah. just, just a heads up, sir. Over five minutes left and after that we will have question answers for you. Yeah. So, uh, we can, uh, if we can quickly. Yeah, yeah. Run the so, uh, now uh, the eight cycle pad. What I say is, you know, it's it's a you're a director of a story. You know, you are, you are, you are just... Uh, you should have the script ready. You can't live from quarter to quarter. So when we had Augmentin, what we did was we had all our line extensions, what we are going to come up with, the duo, whether it was the 625 duo to replace the 375 TID. 375 TID was the largest selling SQ at that time. So then the one gram duo replacing the 625 TID and the DRSP story or the 457 syrup, whatever it may be. Everything was planned. So we had, at any point in time, if you have to build a brand, a good brand manager should have his plan for next eight cycles, everything. So that actually helps in keeping control over the market. So last, a few slides, few tips, just be seen everywhere. You are the there in the front. You should be the guy where people look up to your other department. This big mega brand is not created by one person. It's a team effort. So it's uh, uh, cliche to say that, but... Uh, the person in front should be seen in uh, from printing, packaging, demand planning, medical, regulatory, uh, you know, wherever it is. So they, they all should reach out to the brand manager concerned to, uh, you know, ask questions or you should be pushing yourself on all fronts. Because as a brand manager, truly speaking, you are getting paid only through your brand. So there are, for everybody else, there is something else to look after as well. Lead the field, don't blame the field, own the field, lead the field. So go there, be there, work with them, be very, very active. So uh, be in the market, try and understand, see where your course correction is important, where your message is going through, where your message is faltering, make those small, uh, alterations, tweak it, and then help them, help them to get through. So again, uh, you know, what I say is, uh, see, largely in uh, pharma, if you see, if you get your top line right, you get your bottom line right, huh? So it's not always, uh, I have never seen till now a situation where a great idea has been starved because of want of money. So if you have a great idea, it has always got money. So then how do I how do I choose a product? I think as I told, uh, you know, once you have seen that there's a clear merit, then be the first. Be the, as I told, be, if not the first in the market, be at least the first in the mind and keep a reasonable price. We have had some very interesting discussion on pricing. I would say India is still a price sensitive market. Don't go... Uh, way below that is stupid uh, clearly a brand by itself means that it will it will carry a premium the difference between a brand and a commodity is commodity can't command a premium brand will command a premium but we have also got enough examples in india where uh, you know outlandish pricing has killed good products so it should be it's, a, it's still a largely a private pay market insurance is picking up picking up well but still it is only for hospitalized patients 
so keep a reasonable price and you have to today somebody was talking about uh, you know today it is very different from what it was uh, previously yeah uh, shankar was saying that there are other advantages today uh, compared to the type of doctor list what uh, uh, they had when they launched omes but you have to engage the top doctors in a very very innovative manner to engage them in a innovative manner what is required is uh, you should know their pain points you should know what evidence you want to generate they all ask for local data uh, you know uh, so nothing like uh, uh, generating data with of course with all uh, uh, keeping it right in terms of compliance or not trying to cut corners but then what will be credible what can be presented there are wonderful examples in the industry where people have generated fantastic data and asking the user our doctors to come and present and those are those are become brands like janovia has become really big because they have done some very very innovative engagement so once you are first once you keep a reasonable price and you are engaging your customers very well i think mostly you are through with a big brand uh, in the offing this i have told enough whose energy behave like one possess to exhibit passion nothing to beat uh, a passionate person you know so with this i just conclude my presentation dr swati i am not sure how much i exceeded uh, but uh, my apologies if i have done uh, but i'm here to take questions if any thank you thank you wasan sir and uh, for the brand managers who attended this one uh, session from uh, mr wasan you have all the ppts which you need the slides which you need for your teams so if you have actually listened to how he structured the slide and how he spoke you could you can have a you know template for you how to build that brand thank you wasan sir and uh, uh, let me take some questions there are very interesting questions coming up um is there is there different strategy for oral and parenteral dose form if yes then how yeah obviously because the oral market is different from the parenteral market one of the classical mistakes what i have seen is when you promote a rain no so are also available uh, you know that is i think is it's a suicidal uh, message to say that also available because each if you take in the case of augmentin so what we had we had actually you know four different visual aids one is for oral which was in respiratory infection of course then we had one for pediatrics then uh, as far as uh, uh, the injectables are concerned we had one message going for uh, uh the uh, hospital acquired pneumonia and one for surgical prophylaxis so when i am talking to surgeons i am talking about surgical prophylaxis where we say that you you don't even need to use metronidazole uh so uh, uh, because uh, augmentin gives you that uh, extra coverage of anaerobes as well so though though most doctors still prefer to use uh, metronidazole along with augmentin but what it, it gave a very powerful message that it can actually even substitute uh, uh metron result in terms of anaerobic coverage now any uh, that is very different uh, from a uh, you know when you talk about uh, say respiratory tract infections your sinusitis or uh, you know pharyngitis or uh, lower respiratory like uh, bronchitis bronchiectasis and uh, all this stuff, or acute exacerbation of chronic bronchitis and all this stuff so uh, a parenteral story is very different if you are talking about surgical prophylaxis you are talking about uh, uh, to the physician we talked about uh, community acquired pneumonia and where you can use uh, the iv if it is uh, pretty bad so obviously you need to uh, understand in the market in which each of these uh, presentations uh, uh, play and then play accordingly thank you vasan sir for giving giving that clarity um, one question is i wanted to know how brands are tackling uh, generics Uh, related to that question only i understand that industry is steadily moving towards trade generics what principles of brand marketing hold true there no no if you are talking about see there uh, there is uh, what we say generics is like uh, you know uh, let me uh, go back the classical way of defining this there's a originator brand and there are generic brands okay and i am here not uh, talking about the generic generic brand uh, we will come to it in a minute we'll we'll keep it aside so when you say about an originator brand and a generic brand see typically uh, the doctor doesn't care who is the originator that uh, so this is a this is a myth you know where the multinational brands are the originators and others are generics so we have got very good examples from companies like cipla uh, where uh, you know Uh, their brands have actually been seen as the brand the leading brand in front of uh, 
uh, many other uh, b b brand from MNCs because these are the brands. We also saw this great example from uh, Telma. So where, you know, if you are answering their problems in the right manner, and when I say you, not only you in head office by launching the brand, but uh, you have trained your field force and they are passionate. See, the doctor somewhere decides that among all these companies which come to me to market the same generic, same molecule, I think this company knows the best about this product. He chooses, he makes an impression because every time when I ask something, they are the first to respond. They give credible information. They give dependable information. So that means this company has got extra stakes in this product. So you will find that somebody like, uh, you know, today if we have created a 300 crore uh, uh, sustain, so they know that if anything about, uh, uh, say, uh, they want to ask about natural magnetic exposition, they know that it is Sunpharma they have to come to. So like that, over a period of time you do it, you that's how you gain that originality space, the space of originality. It doesn't matter in which lab it was discovered. So it has to be decided on the ground. If you don't behave like an original researcher, then R&D has done a great job, but then the marketing uh, folks have failed. So now then, uh, you know, how do you handle uh, the generics? So again, I say there are plenty of examples, even in a crowded market today, if the price has been reasonable, I think the originator still uh, truly playing the right game enjoys a lion's share of the market, 30% share, 40% share. We still see that. How they are able to do, because they believe that they are the ones who know this molecule and they add value in terms of scientific uh, knowledge. I think uh, Mr. Motonia was saying that, that, uh, you know, you are actually helping the doctor to actually, uh, you know, make him uh, do the right prescription. So uh, then, uh, you know, rest all become generics by themselves because you are taking the lead. Now, of course, generic, generic is a very different market that uh, I wouldn't, there are a lot other dynamics there. So I'm not getting into that. Yeah. Yeah. To, so Vasan sir, thank you so much. Yeah. for taking us through and answering the questions patiently please be there because there are a few questions uh, remaining which uh, on which if you answer it will be very very helpful all the oh great yeah, yeah i'll be there are also there so thank yeah. you so much